I'm here to tell a story about a scientific revolution that's taking place and a movement that requires all of our participation. This story starts very personal for me. I call it my Charles Dickens period. It was a tale of two poles. It was the best of times and the worst of times for me. Professionally, things were not, couldn't have gone any better. I had started a technology company, it had grown, it was very successful, and the company was acquired. But personally, my home life and marriage was falling apart. And at the age of 31, seemingly in perfect health, I experienced a stroke. I found myself mentally and emotionally feeling like I was being buffeted from side to side, highs and lows, and I was on a seesaw. I knew if I had to put a medical term around it, I wasn't happy. So I needed something, and I started to look for solutions, and I started to investigate meditation. Now, I'm not the type of person that is going to jump into something with, with blind faith. And so I needed to understand what was happening when I was meditating. And if anyone can take the fun out of relaxing, it's going to be me. So I decided I was going to quantify this experience. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I literally got out an Excel spreadsheet And I decided that I was going to mark the days that I meditated versus the days that I didn't. And what did I find? I found subjectively that the days that I meditated, I felt better able to deal with what was going on. It wasn't necessarily that things changed, but my ability to deal with things changed versus the days that I didn't meditate. Back to that seesaw effect. But that wasn't enough. The inner geek in me wanted to know more. What was going on? Was something happening at a scientific level or something happening in the brain that was affecting my body and how I perceived the world? So as a kid, I was pretty athletic, loved sports, and I was convinced that I was going to play in the NFL and the NBA at the same time. <laughs> then something happened, puberty. And what you see was what I looked like then. So it was very clear that neither of those sports or any professional sport was going to be in my future. So I decided I was going to do the next best thing. And that is, if I couldn't be a professional athlete, let me see if I could train like one. So I went to a facility called Athletes Performance. That's how I felt when I got there. Athletes' performance, if there's anybody in the audience who is a top prospect for the NFL, then you've probably heard of athletes' performance. If not, let me just say it is the elite sports training facility in the country where all the top draft picks uh, go to work out and get ready for the NFL combine. They're, they've delivered these stellar results based on a philosophy that I thought was really interesting because it was based on four pillars. The first was mindset. Then it was movement nutrition, and recovery, which I went to athletes' performance already excelling at, so I didn't need their help on that. I put myself in five days of grueling training. You train twice a day. That last picture is the cold plunge, so it's 45 degrees. You have to go in there after each workout. It's to help with the inflammation. And I willingly spent thousands of dollars to subject myself to this in a desire to try to understand what was going on. I was training with professional athletes, and it was really, for me, the start of understanding. When I was training, AP talked about this connection. And if there was any time that you had to do a really hard exercise, they'd get in your face and be like, get your mind right. Kind of scare you, but you realize, why are they talking about getting your mind right, and it's something physical that I'm doing? When I left AP, I had two burning questions. The first one is, is there scientific evidence, correlation between a fit mind and elite performance? And the second question, which was literally burning, 
was this icy hot come in 10 gallon drums. <laughs> I was on fire. But beyond just a fit mind and elite performance, I wanted to understand, does a healthy mind equal a healthy body? And conversely, does an unhealthy mind translate into an unhealthy body? Now, this may seem intuitive to most of you, because you think about it, the body is interconnected, and we're all one system. It's an ecosystem, so there should be a correlation. But it's only been recently that we've been able to truly quantify what that connection is. Shortly after leaving AP, I decided to put my money where my mouth was, and I started a company called Be Life with the goal of creating a personalized fitness program for the mind. My co-founder and I quickly became neuroscience and cognitive psychology groupies. I mean, we were reading brain imaging studies and trying to connect with the latest research academic rock stars to just learn and understand more about how we could make this accessible to more people. We were convinced. We came, up, uh, came, came across some of the research of Dr. Richard Davidson from the University of Wisconsin at Madison, who's done some really interesting and seminal work hooking up Buddhist uh, nuns and monks and other expert meditators to fMRI and EEG machines and showing the connection between meditation and changing, literally changing our neural structure and how we function and supporting our immune system, our immune response. We came across uh, Dr. Steve Cole from Hope Lab and UCLA. Fascinating research that he and his colleagues have done where they're looking at how, to, how the building and the development of psychological resilience through engaging in mindfulness and positivity practices actually impacts and correlates to our physiological resilience. Talking about strengthening the immune system and reducing inflammation. So if you think about the contrast of meditate or a 45 degree cold plunge, lotus position all the way for me. And finally, what I've found really fascinating is the work that Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn has done with her colleagues at UCSF, where she won in 2009, her and her team, the Nobel Prize for Medicine for her research on telomeres. Now, telomeres are the tips of our chromosomes that protect our DNA, literally protect our DNA from cellular aging. Her research has indicated that when we engage in mindfulness practices, positivity, things that address chronic stress, that allow us to deal with our chronic stress, we can actually stop the shortening of telomeres and in some cases lengthen that. So reversing cellular aging and all of the impacts that are associated with that. So what is this prescription? This, what is the workout plan? to be able to build this fit mind. Well, it isn't a prescription. It doesn't come in pill format. It's really pretty simple. It's engaging in mindfulness and focusing practices, often through meditation. It is about developing, in a conscious way, our positivity. It is nurturing real social connections, because social is so critical. It is living with compassion and gratitude. And sleep is very important as a foundation piece to this prescription. This mind fitness movement, which is here and presented for us right now, we know the science. And if you believe what I'm saying in terms of the psychological and physiological benefits that come from developing a healthy mind, I would actually expect to see everybody in the lotus position right now. Now, I think the reason why we're still not at that tipping point yet, is that most of us don't really understand that connection, sort of internally in our gut, understand that connection between a healthy mind and a healthy body, or we don't understand how we can practice and develop these skills, because they're literally like skills. It's like training. And it's why, in terms of calling it mind fitness, there is a process that we can all engage in to strengthen.
We've been here before. The 80s, we saw the rise of this physical fitness movement. Spandex was everywhere, and shame to say, yours included was involved in that. It was not a good look, not a good look. But it ushered in a, a period that we now all understand, and we just take it for, com you know, it's common that physical fitness is important. I think we're at a place right now where we're poised for the same thing. The prevalence of sensors, all of these devices that are, are we're able to track our physical uh, being, the knowledge now around neuroplasticity and how the brain can continue to grow, and really understanding what these exercises are put us in this place. And there's never been a more important time than now for us. Think about the financial instability that we're going through, global unrest and terrorism, environmental concerns. Literally, stress is killing us and has been called the 21st century plague for that reason. So where do we go from here? What's next? How does this movement get catalyzed? Well, there's really a role for all of us to play. There's a role for government, not making any political statements, but there is a role for government. In the 50s and 60s, actually, the physical fitness movement was initiated by government legislation and continued to expand. Sports and the military are already understand the connection between the mind and elite performance, and we're going to see them leading the way. And healthcare should have an economic incentive to support prevention and alternative care, as should corporations based on the positive impact to productivity and profitability that comes from having a healthy and creative workforce. And I think this is also going to usher in an opportunity for technology to play a role in supporting it. Just like in physical fitness, where gym memberships and that spandex, again, was everywhere, I think there are going to be tools that are available, and there are tools that are available to help us develop and build these practices that strengthen our mind and our body. So I became convinced through my personal journey about the understanding and how to incorporate that understanding about how to deliver and how to be healthier and happier from the inside. And I hope that for those of you who are not yet on this journey, what I've been able to share here provides some inspiration for you to continue on that path. And to help me in that cause, I'd like to leave you with one of my favorite quotes from the great Carl Sagan. Understanding is a kind of ecstasy, and we all could use a bit of ecstasy in our lives. Thank you very much.